Warning, the language in this episode is pretty fucked up. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Crucimix, the best snack when your cadaver is reanimated to march behind your savior in the end times. Crucimix, the best gorps for a corpse. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hey, the Ben Dot Chat. Oh, hi, Claire and Molly. What did you learn from Professor Farnsworth? I learned that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. Yay! Hooray! I'm I'm Wilson! Day 2020. It's January 2nd. And it's Swiss Cheese Day. <laughs> the holiest of holies. There we go. <laughs> I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Aaron Burrs, New Jersey, <laughs> Cincinnati Swing State, and Good Husband, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. Oh, this week's episode, Rudy Giuliani rates Jews on a scale from George Soros to Mel Brooks. <laughs> Based on that scale, 90% of Jewish people are not Jewish people. And Tom and Cecil from Cognitive Dissonance will be here to not be Jewish people either. But first, the diatribe. When scores of newspapers run an op-ed titled Christianity is the greatest engine of moral reform and cultural riches the world has ever known, you can pretty much bank on it winding up in my inbox several times. So, yeah, this fetid tripe popped up on Christmas Day and came to us from some evangelical historian out of Baylor. Do you hear a gay? I don't hear anything university. So, you know, it's going to be objective and it sets a record for self-refutation. Here's the goddamn opening sentence, quote, often media outlets, it seems, are uninterested in religion, especially Christianity, except when it's connected to scandals and electoral controversies, end quote, said the article in several media outlets with no subject other than boy is Christianity awesome and a title that's just a verbose way of saying Christianity is the best of the religions. Are you fucking kidding me? First of all, how the fuck is anybody going to present themselves as an authority on moral reform when they're collecting their paycheck from an institution dedicated to ironing out the persistent bend in the moral universe's arc? But secondly, and more importantly, the fuck it is! This is a claim you've got to trudge through a lot if you read much history. Basically, the argument goes like this. If you use the morality of Western European nations as your measuring stick, Western European nations are the most moral nations. And because those nations were historically Christian, Christianity must be great at making nations moral. Now, it's tempting to dismiss this argument by pointing out some of the other things those nations have in common historically, right? Like maybe the moralizing force was the diatonic scale or the bubonic plague, but that skirts around their actual argument because you can't actually argue that Christianity, specifically the Roman Catholic brand, was a moralizing force in Western Europe throughout the modern history of the region. It's hard to argue that it was very good at doing that when you compare the morality of Western Europe when the Vatican was in charge to, I don't know, anywhere else in the goddamn world at that time. But it clearly did set the moral tone for the region for a lengthy period. Of course, If we accept the measure of morality that they're using here, you can't help but notice that the bull market on morality that we're experiencing now didn't start when we started being Christian. In fact, it actually started when we stopped. Right? The the embrace of rationality that we shorthand as the Enlightenment is the genesis of whatever moral capital the West has to offer. What's more, the historians making this claim admit as much, but then they try to give Christianity credit anyway by saying that the Enlightenment couldn't have happened if the Christian worldview hadn't primed society and built an ethical skeleton the Enlightenment thinking could hang on 
or some such bullshit. Now, that's audacious on its face, right? It's the, yeah, but I loosened the jar of historical accomplishments. But it's far worse when you consider that the movement we're talking about was literally defined by the extent to which people stopped listening to the goddamn church. It was an intellectual rebellion against what religion was selling, both the Catholics and the Lutherans. So, yeah, couldn't have done it without them, sure. But, like, you know, I couldn't have quit smoking if it hadn't been for cigarettes. I'm still not tempted to give them a lot of the credit. But the worst thing, though, about this argument is that it mistakes homogeny for morality. I, I mean, your moral system may be the one that wins out in a democratic worldwide vote, but only because your continent had the best boats and the most coastline back in the day. The near universality of Western ethics is a byproduct of colonialism, not their innate superiority. If the Chinese had done it, historians would say the same shit about Confucianism or Buddhism or something, because as it happens, stuff like we should figure out a way to do this where we don't kill each other and stuff is just universal goals of society, not some secret fucking formula that Jesus gave us, right? Like once the people of the world were knit together, some basic understanding of morals was bound to develop. It happened every other time multiple isolated groups of humans came together. You know, you know the, the, the people who could throw the biggest dick on the scale at that point got to dictate a lot of it. And so mostly they won out, but they didn't always win. The very means by which they spread their morals was deemed immoral by the International Court of Public Opinion. And we eventually did away with colonialism or, or I mean, at least did away with openly bragging about it. And sure, historians can point to all kinds of influential historical thinkers in the field of ethics that were strongly influenced by their Christian faith. But since you can also point to influential thinkers in the field that have other religions or no religion at all, it would be fucking pointless. So when they make the claim to some kind of unique Christian morality, it's worth keeping in mind that with apologies to Voltaire, it's not unique, it's not Christian, and it's not morality. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are old acquaintances Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas. Are you ready to be brought to mind? I mean, if anyone was ever here because we're here, because we're here, because we're here, <laughs> it's me and he. Rigging in the new year with World War One trench song deep cuts. Nailing it. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> We're here because we're here because you guys aren't going to jump in. No. We're here because we're here. In our lead story tonight, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> Song's a lot longer than you remembered it being, huh? It's a, Hard to do just a couple of bars of that bad boy. <laughs> because yeah. Lead story tonight. In I Need a Jew, Liani News. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> During an interview with New York Magazine last week, Donald Trump's penguin lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> claimed that he's, quote, more Jewish than George Soros. I love penguin Rudolph lawyers so much. Giuliani. <laughs> yeah, right. The Italian American Catholic has a scale in his mind about the extent to which people are Jewish, like on a spectrum of Judaism. And he thinks he has more uh, Jewish units, Jewish units than yeah. literal units. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph Giuliani thinks he has more Junets <laughs> than literal Holocaust survivor yeah. George Soros. I mean... Looks like we got to settle this with an old-fashioned jew -off. First event, <laughs> schmitzing. Go! Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm pretty sure Rudy could nail that one. Yeah. So maybe a different, different first round. <laughs> so apparently, this whole thing is based on the idea that your level of Judaism is determined by how much you agree with Donald Trump on Israel. It, huh. It's not a great metric, but that's no, Julian's no, Ju metric. Jewishness seems more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have but, one. Yeah, so here's the thing. George Soros doesn't agree with Palestinian apartheid as practiced by Benjamin Netanyahu. So you subtract that from Soros's being a Jewish person to <laughs> right. get his <laughs> final Judaism score, mm -hmm. which is apparently medium amounts of Jewish. And... Giuliani is more in the medium well range in his head. So <laughs> hey, there you go. Careful, Heath. Trump will cover him in ketchup. <laughs> <laughs>
I will not be careful. Uh, so <laughs> here's the exact words from Giuliani. Quote, don't tell me I'm anti-Semitic if I oppose him. <laughs> apparently, apparently the guy from New York Magazine was about to do that. Uh, I, I don't know. Hard to say, but that's well, how he started. I, I mean, I feel like don't tell me I'm anti-Semitic is like a reflex preface to Trump surrogates at this point. <laughs> yeah. And the world's most Jewish Catholic continued. Soros is hardly a Jew. I'm more of a Jew than Soros is. I probably know more about. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't go to religion synagogue. <laughs> Uh, Giuliani is one of those people who attends a church, religion, synagogue. Yeah. Uh -huh. one, of, one of those Jewish people. And continuing the quote, Soros doesn't support Israel. He's an enemy of Israel. He's elected eight anarchist DAs in the United States. What? End quote. <laughs> he doesn't have candles. I have candles. You want to talk secret <laughs> gold? I have secret <laughs> gold. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Because this sounds so oxymoronic to me. The Jews control the 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 DA appointments? <laughs> through, wait, wait, through some sort of limited Jewish Democratic Council? I'm yep. so confused. Yeah. And um, what the fuck is an anarchist DA? You, you might ask. Just mm. like, what, like, what would they do? Prosecute anything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Prosecute nothing. <laughs> no idea what the fuck he thinks that means. <laughs> and um, how would those anarchist DAs operate as enemies of foreign countries? Mm, go fuck yourself. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have any idea about any of those words? E even before that? So confused. I, I mean, either I don't or Rudy doesn't. One of those things is true. <laughs> All I know is that anarchy is one of those words that the dumbest on both the left and right can agree on saying without any idea what that means. It's a, it's a real, it brings people together, anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> and in molester lister news tonight, we learned this week that show of hands might not be the best way to root out child molesters when the AP released a report showing that these lists of rapist priests that Catholic dioceses keep churning out might just be incomplete. And the headlines are all saying that the AP analysis found more than 900 clergy members accused of child abuse that weren't included on their list. And as bad as 900 sounds, I want you to keep in mind what a wide range more than is. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a lot. OK, a uh, new system. This should work better. If you're a priest, you are under arrest now. Sure, yeah, right. The there you go. We'll figure out which <laughs> fucking three of you are not child molesters. I feel like that's a simpler system. I, honestly, I feel like based on current laws, being a priest is probable cause. Is it not? Like, <laughs> yep. I feel like you could pull them out of the car. You know what they say? If you want to make an omelet, you shouldn't have fucked so many kids. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. That is what they say. So basically, all the AP did is check the list that these dioceses have put out against other publicly available documents. Someone in the Vatican is just like, what do you mean there's other publicly available documents? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, well, look, there's a group called bishopaccountability.org that has a far more thorough list than the ones these Catholic officials are presenting. And between that website, bankruptcy documents, lawsuits, settlement information, grand jury reports, and media accounts, they could point to more than 900 people who the Catholic Church seemed to have forgotten to include. Jesus Christ. We're, we're basically doing the kindergarten teacher thing, being like, all right. Everyone close their eyes, and if all the molester priests are on my desk yes. when we open them up, yes. we'll call it a day. What the fuck? <laughs> and I, I should be clear here that, yes, reasonable people could disagree about what the word credibly means when we're talking about people who were credibly accused of something. But I also should be clear that these are not cases like this. Mm -mm, no, they are not. <laughs> okay. One example the AP gives is Richard J. Poster, who, quote, Served time for possessing child pornography, violated his probation by having contact with children, admitted masturbating in the bushes near a church school, and in 2005 was put on a sex offender registry, end quote. And yet that guy was only added to the church's official list when the Associated Press asked why the fuck he wasn't already on it. <sighs> okay, eyes are still closed, but anyone who rhymes with 
Pritchard Schmoster needs to come <laughs> sit on the desk. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, you know what? Nobody, nobody closed their eyes ever. Or a priest will fuck you, apparently. So let's yeah, not. Yeah, right. Yeah. If we uh, learned anything. That's a bad system. <laughs> yeah. Richard, you're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> and look. I know it comes as no surprise that the Catholic Church has been less than forthcoming about how many of them rape kids, but predictability shouldn't temper our outrage. And and for fuck's sake, at least they should be trying harder than this, right? Like, I know that nobody in this fucking country is going to hold a religion accountable for a thing, but they should at least act like that's a possibility. For my sake, just go through the fucking motions. I'm just saying that as much as the Catholic Church hates the idea of coming clean on this, some kid in France found a solution they're going to like even less. Hashtag not all oh. heroes wear capes. <laughs> okay, no, no. And in look who's caucusing news tonight. You know, what with 2019 being a constant stream of horrible things Trump and his cronies said and did, I think we all deserve a little bit of good news in the new year, don't you? Well, luckily, this week we got an adorable story out of Whitehall, Texas, where they just <laughs> elected seven-month-old Charlie McMillan, America's youngest mayor. Literally happened. Oh, yeah, but I feel like the Buttigieg campaign engineered this so he wouldn't be the least experienced one anymore. <laughs> so. Not that we need an explanation for a baby mayor in 2020, because... Who fucking cares anymore? But just in case you're curious, <laughs> Charlie's election is the result of a fundraiser for the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department. And Charlie's parents were the highest bidder. Oh, so like normal elections, but like way more honest, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, th no, they only let Americans bid. Oh, all right. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Charlie's campaign <laughs> was <laughs> adorable. His campaign slogan? Make America kind again. And he even had his own customized swearing in, which went, quote, I, William Charles McMillan, do solemnly promise that I will faithfully execute the office of mayor of Whitehall and will, to the best of my ability, be kind to everyone on the playground, promote life, adoption, and good, clean country living, pave all gravel roads, take cookies to the volunteer fire department, catch the biggest catfish, and preserve, protect, and defend the community of Whitehall. So help me, mom and dad. Uh, okay. Um. So I know they snuck some pro-life propaganda in there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm even more concerned about this enormous catfish demon that's terrorizing <laughs> this little town. What and wh and why would about? they send little Willie after it, right? <laughs> a I mean, seventh month old, <laughs> month old is going to catch a giant cat, like wrestle it out you of a pond? What fucked. is happening? <laughs> yep. So uh, as he pointed out, you might have caught that little uh, acknowledgement of life there in his cutesy bootsy swearing in speech. But that's not all. When you click on Charlie's website, there are multiple links to crisis pregnancy centers. Oh, fuck. fuck yes. Right. Jeez. Which, for those of you who are unfamiliar, are fake Planned Parenthoods set up by Christians where they literally dress up in scrubs and lie to you about abortion. And the deeper you look into this website, the scarier it gets. On the page about Charlie's platform, the first item is, surprise, surprise, life, supported by a Bible quote. And the last item is... A love of America and her flag, end quote. I know this will be, it'll like feel weird, but we should totally air an attack ad. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at we should totally. So in conclusion, America's youngest mayor is an anti-abortion psyop meant to trick teenagers into fake doctor's offices so they can scare them out of medical care. Welcome to 2020, motherfuckers. Nobody's coming to save us. Tim Ryan. <laughs> Tim Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and in lubing the wheels of justice news tonight, when Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was defrocked amid rampant allegations of child sex abuse in 2018, a lot of people came out and said, uh, yeah, good on you, Vatican, but here's a letter I sent to you warning about this shit in 2004. Like, a lot of people did that. And that led many to ask why the Vatican sat on those reports for so long. I mean, nobody on this show asked, but people. Well, people yeah, right, until mm -hmm. now... We've all kind of assumed that it was because the Vatican has a standing policy of not giving a fuck about which kids they did and didn't rape. But it turns out there might have been more to it than that. According to financial records obtained by the scathing atheist hmm. via the investigative report about them in The Washington Post. OK, sure. McCarrick had been using church money to pay off all his would be inquisitors for the better part of two decades. Oh, 
Oh, hey, but that's okay. He didn't use any of the money your sweet grandma who loves gay people puts in the box every Sunday. One second. Uh, this just in. Yes, he did. And your yep. grandma has more verifiable ties to child trafficking than Prince Andrew. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. Your grandmother murdered Jeffrey Epstein. That's, <laughs> in, that's in the Washington Post. That's a real news source. Your All grandma right. murdered Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> yes, she you did. heard it here at the Scathing Atheist via the Washington Post. So apparently, and Andrew Torres, one of the perks of McGarrick's Post was sole discretion over a, a little known fund called the Archbishop's Special Fund, which he could raise money for, then spend on whatever the fuck he wanted. Nobody was checking. It was all tax exempt. And apparently, among the many things he elected to spend that free money on were large cash payments to all the higher ups in the Vatican that decided whether or not to investigate him. Oh, not the victims? I thought you were going to say no, 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 including $90,000 sent to Pope John Paul II and $291,000 sent to Benedict. Well, maybe those two were victims, too. I don't, well, we don't know. <laughs> They're well, adults. It's different, but still. What I love here is that the best defense anyone can offer is, okay, but some of that money went to, like, legitimate charities and shit. Your Honor, what? I will have you know I use this hatchet for a lot of non-murder stuff. Be yep. reasonable. <laughs> That's it. That's the defense. This garrote was a piano string for many years. Like, why do you hate art, Your yes. Honor? Why do you hate art? And in... Genetic Zootopia news. <laughs> we have a story about Coach Dave Dobenmeyer. In his final performance of 2019, he fired up his extremely sad virtual reality empty stadium and did another episode of Pass the Salt Live, his webcast, which seems to be a Christian positive show that's themed around all the clobber passages of the Bible. Yeah, which is crazy because to look at him, you'd think he was more of a fan of the cobbler passages of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to think that the endorsements of, you know, rape, slavery, murder, racial segregation, those are Christianity clobbering all the other worldviews because those are great. And this latest episode focused on the idea that mixed race interactions of human beings are obviously evil, as proven by the zoo. Oh, no. So what? Um, <laughs> no. He, he, yeah. He, he went, he went to the zoo recently and learned that the headline from right wing watch pretty much tells the whole story. Quote, Dave Dobenmeyer took his grandchildren to see the Christmas display at the zoo last night. And the trip reinforced his opposition to interracial marriage. End quote. Okay, look, coach, I thought Harambe got a raw deal too, but we have to move past it. <laughs> it's been four years, coach. It's been four years. <laughs> Put your dick away too. <laughs> and here's what coach Dave had to say. Translated as best I could, given the very large, dusty, spittle-covered patch of steel wool on his face that he has to speak <laughs> through. Yeah. Quote, you don't see eagles marrying buzzards, do you? I do not. What? You don't see it happening. <laughs> no. End quote. Yeah. Uh, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> no, I guess not. Uh, apparently his local zoo does a, a Christmas display with, uh, I don't know, eagles getting married to each other, but not <laughs> buzzards and like buzzards just drinking from their own separate water fountains I next just, he, to the eagle <laughs> wedding. I have no idea. But that bring, the, the, like, but that brings up the question: Does he see bird marriages? <laughs> right, right, because I, like I wouldn't say this about many people, but that would actually explain an awful lot. Oh <laughs> yes, yeah, Coach Dave. I mean, as a human being, he is not well, but he is correctly describing the Bible's view on miscegenation. That's real. That's in the fucking book. Mm -hmm. So, point is, American people. They're like Nazi mogwais in a lot of ways. And the Bible is like feeding them after midnight. <laughs> and if Coach Dave ever takes a shower, I'm quite certain he'll magically explode into a pack of Coach Daves. So, <laughs> you know, friends don't let friends have Bibles. Yeah. Is the message of our show. Yeah. And finally tonight, in Buttigieg, not lest ye be Buttigieg news tonight. <laughs> 
America's <laughs> second youngest and most adorable mayor, yes, Pete you Buttigieg, are. gave away yes, his secret theocratic agenda this week when he explained that he didn't know nothing about no secret Mormon money, but he's pretty sure churches don't owe you shit. <sighs> wow. Super disappointing. I was already not very excited about this guy's Christianity. This uh, this makes it even worse. So, yeah, obviously the GOP full of theocrats is terrifying, but Mayor Pete is a live action example of just how insidious religion can be. He's a Harvard and Oxford educated Rhodes scholar, a military veteran and a gay person. And and he's like, yeah, uh, they want to murder me technically in that book, but. End of my thought. I'm a Christian. That yeah. Is, and he's a highly yeah. intelligent person. Right. I, I, I mean, and look, I want to be fair to, to Mayor Pete here. He expressed the same opinion on this as every other candidate for president in like the nation's history would have if you'd pinned him down on it. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't make him an outlier or anything. Nope. No, he's right. Right in line with everybody else. So uh, here's the backstory at a town hall in what appears to be a kindergarten basement this week. It's a weird video. Mayor Pete <laughs> was asked by atheist activist Justin Scott whether in the light of recent revelations that the Mormon church was hiding a hundred billion dollars, his administration would require churches to fill out the same paperwork as other nonprofits, to which Pete responded, you guys ready for the Dave Dobbenmeyer-esque answer he gave here? <laughs> Quote, so not being very familiar with the case that you're describing and supporting, as I do, the tax-exempt status of churches, I would also say that anytime you have practices, whether they are political practices or profit-making practices or anything else that is outside of the realm Jesus of Christ. why that tax protecting status exists, then it is very important that there be the right level of accountability, transparency, and responsibility, and compliance. Um. Hey, you just said four words that basically mean the exact same thing here. Are you stalling? You're Mayor stalling. Pete? You're stalling. Are you stalling while, while you find a way to say five minutes of nothing? Just Laws answer. are many things. What the fuck are you talking about? You're at 430, by the way. Um, is it what it is by any chance? <laughs> you want to close it out with something real important and substantive? Yes, continuing. It is what it is. Please don't jump ahead of me. Continuing my quote. <laughs> Weird segue into myself. 445, by the way. Uh, so Again, real, real quote. And that will be an important part, without any regard to any individual organization's beliefs, of how enforcement works and the IRS under my administration. Five nailed it. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Right. So Justin followed up with a much nicer version of fucking what than I would have and specifically asked if <laughs> Buttigieg would make churches fill out those forms. To which Pete responded in a startling moment of clarity, quote, I don't regard churches as being the same as other nonprofits, end quote. Yeah, we can't be forcing churches to spend money on basic transparency paperwork. They need that money to buy airplanes and holy water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, I, I don't want to sound like the Mayor Pete apologist, but a fucking course he sent that. Like, a dude basically says, hey, man, here's a live grenade. Would you like to wrap your presidential aspirations around it? No. Boo. I Boo. would like him to. I would like him yeah, well, to. Yeah. I would <laughs> also nice. like him to. So just a reminder, because it's the new year, and I haven't gotten to say this for weeks. All churches are bad. All of them, even the one Mayor Pete doesn't go to. And with the obligatory, but I'll still enthusiastically support him if he wins the primary tack down at the end of that. We're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll bring in the closers. Giuliani. Way back in 2019, we offered up insults to anybody willing to donate 50 bucks or more to our favorite charity, Modest Needs. And $300,000 worth of you said yes. So in 2020, we're going to be making good on an awful lot of insults still, which means it's time to welcome back our good friends for the purposes of this segment, Tom and Cecil from the Cognitive Dissonance Podcast. Fellas, are you ready to start the new year off with a verbal gangbang? 
Well, we're more glory hole guys, but sure, yeah, no problem. Okay, right? all right. <laughs> Switch it. Wait, wait, wait. Verbal gangbang? I should have skimmed the goddamn invite. Right. Skimmed, <laughs> rimmed, what's the difference? And of course, joining me because they never left and Eli keeps writing in these intros, uh, <laughs> Eli and Heath. <laughs> Yeah, we look like the mansplaining tab of Pornhub. <laughs> it's, it's it's an audio yeah, tab. Right. So yeah, verbal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're the only tab that punches a hole in the wall if you try to close it. <laughs> 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 All right. So now before we begin tonight, I want to give another round of shout outs to those who just gave us money without asking us to do additional work in return. So huge thanks to Eric, James, Linda, Jennifer, Mark, Tim Robertson, Gene from Vermont, other James, Ray, Denny, Amy, Joe, Rhiannon, Derek, Tom, Lee, David, Shane, Diana, Eleanor, Rick, Kevin, who gave us $500 just for the fuck of it, and Steven. All right, let's get to it. Hi, Jeannie from Vermont. Oh, is it Jeannie? Jeannie's awesome. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Heath, this first one's for you. Uh, Kevin would like a roast for the owner of Oberweiss Dairy and Illinois GOP State Senator Jim Oberweiss. Wow, good pick. Jim Oberweiss, you look like a preemie with Benjamin Button disease. <laughs> like, like a crack baby boomer. <laughs> Except instead of white powder, your mom was addicted to white power. <laughs> are gross. You look like Don Rickles described Don Rickles at a roast. <laughs> All right, and Eli, Justin would like a roast for his mother-in-law, Linnea, I think is the pronunciation. Ooh, yeah. Linnea looks like the faces of meth poster for an American girl doll. <laughs> oh, she, she looks like Dolly Parton's going to open up her pod and kill her with a flamethrower. <laughs> she looks like someone messed up Amy Sedaris's funeral makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Love Amy Sedaris. All right. So, Cecil, uh, Kevin would like a roast for the online personality Sips. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, Cheat Day Keanu Reeves starring in his plus size movie John Thick? You're the only streamer who superimposes his head in the lower right screen and it's so huge it still blots out like 40% of the HUD. I'm glad I, I watched this guy loudly narrate his thought process as he played Portal 2. Can you imagine this guy having sex? Of course you can't. He can't either. So. <laughs> he can't either. Okay, no, this one's for you. Sinjin would like a roast for their incubator. Yeah. Yeah, email made it pretty clear that there's a lot of echoey silence around Mother's Day in the family. Because in addition to looking like Barney Rubble snapped and wore Betty as a Buffalo Bill style skin suit. Oh, Jesus. She's also oh, apparently man. a horrible bitch in every possible way. She's like. Tara Westover's parents, but without the decency to catch on fire. But, <laughs> thank you. but what can I possibly say that'll sum it up better than the fact that her own children define their worth by the degree to which they are not like her? <laughs> All right. And uh, Tom, Christopher forked over 380 big ones or 380 little ones, I guess, making up a big one for one of your signature burns of his shitty dad, Robert. All right. Christopher, your dad is not an enlightened centrist. That's that's not a thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing, but it's not a good thing. You can't be enlightened and still straddle the middle. That's not enlightened. That's cowardly. <laughs> but worse, it's boring. And it's very proudly branding yourself with your boring label. Enlightened centrist. Wear your fucking cell phone on your belt. Are you kidding me? Enlightened centrist. Fuck you. You're not even dying on the wrong hill. You're dying in front of the hill, mocking it for being there while being too afraid to climb the fucking thing. Here's my fucking challenge for you, you enlightened centrist. Imagine for just one fantastic moment that you had a fucking spine that you bothered to believe even ever in one fucking thing just imagine that because that imagining is the closest you're ever going to get to feeling something <laughs> <laughs> you're just lowering yourself onto a hill <laughs> <laughs> all right uh another one for you eli michelle would like a roast for her son carson oh my if ever there were a mascot for evergreen state college it's carson <laughs> He looks like he stepped out of a children's television show about the dangers of the gold rush. <laughs> People near Carson long for the days of patchouli oil's popularity, and he is literally in this photo 
hugging a tree. <laughs> and I mean, he is hugging that tree. I'm just saying, Michelle, I know you're his mom, but if there was a hole in that tree, there are other pictures from that day he has not shown you. <laughs> All right, Cecil. Jonathan would like a roast of his brother, Justin. Oh, chubby guy that thinks baseball is the best sport and is a compulsive gambler? Your brother's Pete Rose? Nah, <laughs> he's not that good looking. Come on. <laughs> Ironically, for a guy so against sex trafficking, he looks a lot like a young Prince Andrew. That's a little <laughs> weird. So steer clear of private jets, Justin. Just steer uh-huh. clear of those. Don't want to get on any of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Heath, Adam would like a roast of himself. Okay. Well, Adam asked for a roast of himself and he did not send a picture. So I think we all know what that means. Just uh, picture a person whose Tinder pics are all shots of his collection of figurines on a shelf. (laughs) And he didn't donate last year because uh, apparently he hates half the poor people over the last two years. (laughs) All right, Noah, you're up next. David would like a roast of his boss. Go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rick is one of those assholes who's perpetually sure that her eyes aren't saying, motherfucker, I'll mace you if you put your arms around me again, apparently. <laughs> and it, it, but he also looks like her eyes are always fucking saying that. Like, <laughs> like, he looks like he gets that grab the hand off the shoulder and drop it in the picture thing from his mom. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and if you want to know what he looks like, imagine that you just went to Chuck E. Cheese with your whole family. And you sit down and right next to you, there's a dude dining alone. <laughs> You're picturing Rick. You are. It's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. So, Tom, Elias gave us $300 for a roast of the NCAA. Because if anybody knows sports on this thing, it's going to be <laughs> Tom. So can, can you hurt an entire nonprofit's feelings, Tom? I'm going to give it hell. This is a weird request to give to me. Probably the person on our cast least familiar with college sports. I, seriously, I had to Google NCAA because I thought it might be a basketball thing. <laughs> it, it, it turns out, I guess, this is like a whole thing with like 24 sports involved. And I started for a minute to read an article about it, but then I realized that I would rather hang myself alone in the goddamn garage than care about sports. Or worse, college sports, which seems a lot like caring what? about sports played by people who are nursing hangovers acquired from Red Solo Cups. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm in on this roast. That's fine. But I, I, I do know some people really care a lot about these things. And to them, I say, you're wrong to care. <laughs> you're wrong. I get it. Maybe if you're still in college and you're trying to, like, fit in, and you're away from home for the first time and you're lonely and, you know, you don't have a sense of your own personal identity. It makes sense for you to borrow the bullshit manufactured identity your safe school already packaged up for you. <laughs> fine. But, like, once you're a goddamn grown up, if you don't have something... Like, anything more fulfilling to do with your time than to paint your stupid face and scream at your flat screen? I'll offer this one piece of advice. Extension cords will hold your weight. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, just because you played right field in Little League, you don't need to just shit on the <laughs> All right, gents. Next up, we got a round of special requests. These roasts quite literally have your name on them. Sean, Paul, and Victoria would like a roast for their dog, Henry. God damn it. Just <laughs> not, we're not doing. By Eli as Melania. Oh, whatever. Good. Settling. It's, it's fine. I'm so confused. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> uh, and I just got to say, Henry is the cutest dog we've ever had to roast. This is a challenge. Just do the thing. Do the roast. Okay. It's you this okay. time. All right. <laughs> oh, hey there, Henry. Do you look great? In my home country, we would juice your ears for chews. But I'm glad you live here in America. So unlike in my homeland, Jew and colorblind people get to live. Henry, I offer to make you a presidential dog. But I'm pretty sure Sarah Jacoby Sanders would eat you like a cheese plane. <laughs> I love I want a voice. cheese plane. Uh, Mrs. Trump, you're supposed to roast the dog. Uh, but just said you don't roast dogs here. I, it it means say a mean thing. Oh, okay. Uh, Henry, you look like Shiloh's trophy husband. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Eh, this could have been better. Uh, uh, all right, all right. He's settling. Holy Father kicked us two hundred dollars for you to insult the worst Manhattan thing. Have included a picture. <laughs> this is the worst Manhattan they've ever had. 
This is gross. This does not deserve to be even called a Manhattan. This is, this a, is fuck- a downtown Chicago. This, this oh, is a Staten but- Island iced tea at best. <laughs> it is rough. Like, I think they got the ingredients right. Like, kind of. I see rye, vermouth, and bitters there. But, but instead of cherries, it looks like a jar of, I think, cherry substitute powder, oh. like a non dairy creamer oh, thing. What? Like the dude making a Manhattan white Russian. So, you know what? Let's call it a Donald Trump. A Manhattan white Russian. It, it looks like the bartender just got scolded by his mom and had to make this Manhattan like an angry child. Just like, mm. Okay. All right. Noah, one for you. Liam gave us 512 bucks for you to insult his cat, Michael. Oh, my God. This fat bastard looks like he's wearing a pumpkin. He does. Right? Like, like if Liam had just carved <laughs> holes for the arms and legs and the head and the tail and shit and just stuffed this motherfucker into a gourd like Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, its general <laughs> shape would make sense. God, it's like it's like Morris's little brother that started mainlining that shit when the Nine Lives money rolled in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cecil, some weird guy named Lou, no idea who that is, would like a roast of Thanksgiving with the Cicerello family. Okay, well, it's a pretty easy job. I mean, two of them are already cremated, so the roast is half done. Oh, you know? God. <laughs> dust your hands off. Just dust your hands off, guys. Literally dust your hands off because they are so dust dark. right now. So, yeah. Okay, Thanksgiving my family. Okay. Mm. Fuck. Used to go something like this. Oh, hi, Dad. Yeah, we're here on time. You're not dressed. Oh, you are dressed. Looks like you put on your... Whitest tidy whiteies. It's the holiday <laughs> after all. So, uh, were you at my Thanksgiving? <laughs> here, here, Dad, Dad, have another bottle of Canadian Club. You need it to fuel your yelly fight later with mom. So that's going to be good. You were at my uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, your weird dog's been barking at me for four straight hours. I hope he jumps on the table mid meal. That'd be great. Just pass the gravy around him. We'll just, stay there. we'll just pass the gravy to each other around there. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, well, we're all amped up and ramped up, so it's time, I guess, for another spiking round. It booms better in the new year, Doesn't for it? sure. Yeah. 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 All right, so the category here is X-rated, because this group of people are a bunch of fucks. So I'd like you to roast the following folks by telling us the title of their porno. Let's start with Christina's ex, Michael. Michael is a piece of shit who should get eaten by bears. <laughs> what? Corre- correct. <laughs> correct. What would- You're not doing. We're doing a spiting round. The thing. Sorry. Really? Sorry. Had to be said. Okay. How about jerking off to me jerking off to me jerking off? <laughs> 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 Do it in a fun house. All right. How about Fox's ex cat? All right. I got this one. Um, She looks like she's about to go to a party and pretend to be a Shakespeare scholar. And that's not great because Eli also looks like and is that. <laughs> and, um, her porno is obviously two girls, one couplet. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. How about Melissa's ex, Tim? Okay. So from what I read, Tim is the kind of guy who tells ridiculous lies that can't possibly be true. So his porno, let's see. Something about Tim that can't possibly be true. How about orgasms by Tim or <laughs> Tim's totally normal penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'll take uh, Jen's ex-husband, Toby. How about baby got back child support? Oh, shit. <laughs> also on a personal note, fuck you, Toby. Just fuck uh, you, man. <laughs> How about Laura's ex Armando? Okay. All right, let me do this one. So this guy abandoned Laura the day she got surgery on both feet. So, Take this foot job and shove it, I guess. <laughs> nice, yeah. But after reading further, I'm going to go with Sex Traffic Jam 2, Prison Pedos. Oh, you know Jesus. why. Yeah. You know why. Oh. <laughs> All right, gents. Bonus round. We're still working with Axis, but in the spirit of leaving behind old habits, I'd like to hear what the Roasty in Question's New Year's resolution is. And let's start with Ashley's ex-friend, Casey. All right. Uh, Casey's resolution is to cut back on the carrots that she's constantly gnawing on with her aggressive front tooth over <laughs> It's crazy. She also wants to cut back on being a rabbit. This is a rabbit <laughs> turned into a person by magic. 
The front teeth are enormous. It's it's nuts. <laughs> she, she looks like she's doing crowd control in riot gear with two shields. <laughs> that she always has. I don't know. Maybe join a phalanx. Right? You'd be perfect. You'd be all set. You're going to have two spears. All right. How, uh, Eli, how about Lauren's ex-husband, Andrew? Oh, this one's easy. Andrew's New Year's resolution is to make it all the way through his new wife's writing without gouging out an eye. <laughs> and let me tell you, based on his behind the music shaggy do looking face and the fact that I tried it and it is impossible, <laughs> I do not think he'll manage. Why would you do that to me, Lauren? Why would you send me a sample of that woman's writing? Oh I think about it all the time. Uh. I had a kidney stone this week and it was the second worst thing that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about oh this this one needs to happen. How about ex Australian rugby player Israel Follow? Okay. Fuck that guy. Right. Awesome pick. As an anti gay pastor, I'll pay a lot less attention to sweaty guys playing with balls for money and a lot more attention to sweaty guys playing with balls for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you went honest with it. I love it. All right, I'll take Catherine's ex boyfriend, Jeff. Oh god, I had so many things. That Andrew crossed off, Catherine, on this based on what you told me in the email. There was so much stuff that Andrew said I cannot say about an attorney that works for the FBI. So instead, I went with him resolving to wear a tie without looking like his mom made him. But let's just just so you know, Catherine, I wanted to go way worse. All right, Tom, why don't you wrap up this fighting round with Michael's ex, Tammy? Okay, Tammy. Uh, fuck, I can't imagine what your resolution would be. There is so much of you to fix. Seriously, actually, nothing is salvageable. There's nothing salvageable. Maybe Tammy's resolution should be electroshock therapy to forget being Tammy. Or perhaps eternal Tam sunshine yourself. For yourself. Just get rid of the whole thing. Clean slate. Or perhaps Tammy should resolve to stare every day into a mirror and fucking think about what she's done. Because at some point you just can't bury your head in the sand about who you are anymore. Though that would be an improvement for Tammy because she'd asphyxiate. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this last group of donors shelled out the big bucks. So let's give them the VIP treatment. First up, Cindy gave us 1100 bucks to roast abusers of the English language. Fan-fucking-tastic pick. Yeah, I, I don't job. know if she meant Eli specifically, but let's just, we're going to go with the concept in general, just in case. <laughs> so like my use of Tamesis just now with fan-fucking-tastic. Anyway, <laughs> um, and by the way, yes, she literally meant Eli directly. Okay. The email specifically mentions your and your, lose and loose, and it's and it's. Oh, wow. And also people who make plurals with apostrophe <laughs> S and rhyme with schmoznik. It's about you. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I'm going to let a lot of you guys just fill in here. A lot, You guys are a lot smarter when it comes to this stuff. But I will say, I hope subordinate clause brought you all punctuation for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I personally could care less about the misuse of phrases. Uh -oh. Literally. Because fuck people, <laughs> language and the fact that we don't have to be told not to eat cardboard is what separates us from the fucking animals. <laughs> and when you misuse loose to mean lose and fucking see, you might as well be chewing on the side of a fucking box. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would like to say. Oh, good. Yeah. Go right ahead. You like, oh, thank you. Your turn. I'd like to join in. Yeah, yeah, let's get you in there. You're going to roast on this part? Thought yeah. I'd skip this one, not going to lie. Thought he was like, uh, Eli's uh, just punching music. himself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I can participate in this. I, I would like to say, fuck the people who act like the reason they don't know what a comma is is because language is transformative. Yes, like, you're not Bell you. Hooks. <laughs> you're Captain Hook, and Strunk and White is your crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he misspelled Strunk yeah. and White. <laughs> oh, God. I Googled it, and I clicked on it out of curiosity. God, I prayed for death. It was like, try not to blab it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just for the record, Eli couldn't avoid saying what a comma is, is just now. First of all. <laughs> also, it's strunk and white, not struck and white. <laughs> and speaking of style guides, use the goddamn Oxford comma. So most of those style guides agree, especially for American English. And even if they didn't, like some of the British guides, it's objectively a better system. Strunk and White, the Chicago Manual of Style, 
and the MLA Handbook have all recommended the Oxford comma since they started their publications as early as 1906. You've had plenty of time to adjust to this if you were from the 1800s. <laughs> also, the, the U.S. Government Printing Office, the American Psychological Association, and the American Medical Association say the same thing. Those are doctors. People could fucking die if you leave out the Oxford comma. <laughs> The lack of an Oxford comma in a legal contract cost a dairy company in Maine $5 million because it made a sentence ambiguous in that contract. Lives and milk are at stake, people. <laughs> what the fuck? And use the other commas correctly, too. A guy once got hanged because of a comma dispute. Get it right. <laughs> and more generally, I'm calling for a full boycott on all the dating apps, if you see someone mangling the language in any way, especially in their bio, they should not be breeding. Let's make the world a better place. Good Lord. Fuck. All right, look, I, I, I get it, though. The English language is hard. It is. It's confusing. It's full of complicated, contradictory idioms. We can't figure out if we need commas that we very clearly need. So I get that maybe learning English as a second language is fraught with problems and pitfalls, but... If English is your first language, that almost certainly means that it is also very likely your only language. And if you can't be bothered to become proficient in using the one tool that you need to communicate to be truly known, then maybe, just maybe, it's not that nobody loves you. It's just that you are so inept at being known that you are unworthy of love. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Awesome. Well done, everybody. Next up, J.D. would like Tom and Cecil to roast Trump's newly funded Space Force. <laughs> space Force. You know, it's, this is weird because we used to have a Space Force. We canceled it, but it's nice that we finally have a new challenger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I am all for the Space Force if Lieutenant Bigley General Trump sinks his bone spurs into the side of a rocket like Major Kong from Dr. Strange. <laughs> It'd be good to shift our attention to a vi different vacuum, the vacuum of space, instead of just watching Trump suck down hamburgers like a cartoon <laughs> elephant. <laughs> <laughs> all right how about a uh, all-in roast on behalf of liam for turfs fuck harry potter seriously <laughs> fuck harry potter and fuck jk rowling you wrote one of the most beloved series of books of all time all about the perils of bigotry towards an oppressed minority and now you're retweeting bigots who want a bathroom bill for hogwarts are you serious <laughs> fuck is wrong with you so what's the word for people who retweet bigots uh oh unoriginal bigots that's right yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way the name of the wind is a better magical universe Very they're, Whoa. they're all better magical it's a universe. great magical universe. yeah turfs are like the christian movie guest stars of social justice you're just like oh no really dave Chappelle too oh why didn't you use any of all your money to Google the difference between sex and gender, Dave? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, and look, I know you don't like the term TERFs, but since you're not arguing with any of the words that those letters stand for, fuck you, <laughs> right? <laughs> not even no, I know. It, it, maybe the S it, in the pluralization well, is that. And it. if anything, yeah. the R, right? So like, we're not, we're not very good <laughs> at it. Like, fuck you. You're lucky to have your own <laughs> subcategory of trans folks. But if turf doesn't work, we could just substitute out bigot when we talk yeah. about you. We prefer yeah, right? that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Good system. Turfs. Yeah, sure. Exclude everyone from your weird oppression Olympics. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like we're in a room where everything is on the top shelf and there's a group of short people arguing who can reach less stuff instead of just accepting a boost. <laughs> it's like every other turf war. No one gains any ground. What Amen, brother. <laughs> Jesus. You know, sometimes I find it useful uh, in these situations to just go ahead and summarize what's happening for clarity. So if I'm understanding right... Turfs are women who, as feminists, don't believe that their biology should automatically define their place in the social order. But then when it comes to trans people, they believe that their biology should define their social order. I mean, not feminists. How do I yes. roast this more deeply than just saying it out loud? Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Say it. And before we close this out for the night, we've got a request so special we had to slightly change audio signatures to make it happen. <laughs> this one's for Heath. Natural segue. Nailing it. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is a request from Bailey 
for me to roast Casey. Uh, just a reminder, we met Bailey and Casey a few years ago at a show in Chicago. While Bailey was busy drinking the city of Chicago. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so that, that's just a reminder for Bailey. That's how we originally know you. You probably don't remember that. But the request is a roast of Casey from him. So um, Casey looks like a Disney Channel themed stripper, which is complicated. Um Leads to some very complicated emotions for lots of people. It's that, like, you know, you grew up on Samantha Maselli on Who's the Boss thing or, like, Hannah Montana, now Miley Cyrus. Like, you're allowed to sort of find the adult version, but she's got the Disney thing going. It's very complicated. But it is not complicated for Bailey. And that's why he's asked me to live out my deepest fear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I'm getting down on one knee as I say this. And I hurt myself a little bit. But here it goes. Will you, Casey, marry Bailey? The, this isn't a bit. This is, this is a real thing, we, we think. But as far as we know, 99% sure, seriously, according to Bailey... Casey is the absolute best, and he has loved every minute over the last seven years together with Casey. And he seriously wants you to marry him, I think. You guys think she said yes? Ooh. I mean, I hope she did. It's going to be super awkward if she said no. Yes, super awkward. Before we lay this episode down to sleep, I want to remind you to come out and see us in L.A. on Valentine's Day weekend for a live record of God Awful Movies. Check the show notes for a link to buy tickets and buy them quick. They will sell out. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptical, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday. An even new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I need to thank Heath Enright for being the rudder on this ship. Lucinda Lusions for being the win and its sales, and Eli Bosnick for being the backup gas-powered propulsion option. I also want to thank Dip and Dot Jack and his sisters for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Got to admit, I'm not a parent. I don't speak kid. I have no idea what they're saying at the end there, but it was fucking adorable, so I used it. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's and last week's best people. Corey, Kyle, Eric, Dean, Alex, Bruno, Redolini was really good and diehard. John, Yvette, Bill, Brandy, Karen, John, Melanie, Nicholas, Rose, and Spencer. Corey, Kyle, Eric, and Dean, whose condoms have two-person lift warning signs on the package. Alex, Bruno, John, and Yvette, whose IQs are so high their ideas get elevation sickness. Bill, Brandy, Karen, and John were so skillful they're allowed to run with scissors. And Melanie, Nicholas, Rose, and Spencer are so badass tornadoes have them warnings. Together, these 16 savory sinners selflessly supported our sacrilegious screeds this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the firm will, soft heart, and medium spleen it takes to give us money, but if your internal organs are up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All right, Morgan, I got to tell you something hilarious. In the most Heath thing that ever happened, somebody had put in a request for Heath to do a proposal for their girlfriend at this point. I'll in the get rest to it. And he forgot to fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most Heath thing that ever fucking happened. <laughs> So just it's in it's in the mail. Uh -huh, Shut yeah. up. So just leave me a leave leave a blank space here. We'll we'll record that separately on Wednesday and send that over. But we do have a little <laughs> outro that we're gonna do with it right now while we've still be got better if he had here. to propose over the phone. That'd be the right. only other <laughs> yeah, way. Right? Right. That'd yeah. be awesome. How much you betting? Oh, I just, just that's just a, a expression. One Bitcoin. One one bet. One bet. That's a large bet. That's I was gonna say. Yeah, right. Yeah, after, exactly. Even after it's tanked over the last year or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One bet unit.
God. Actually, I, I, over this year, it's done okay because it tanked the end of last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over, over 2019. 20- yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were going like 2020. Actually, it's been killing it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty much in place. But I think at the end of 2018, it got down in like the three thousand, four thousand dollar range. Now it's up to like seven thousand ish. I think something like that. Yeah. What else are you gonna buy child porn with? Iota? No. Come on. <laughs> All right. Andrew Zapito. You sent me that, Morgan. Not with not with the Andrew Zapito. <laughs> Andrew, would you if say that's if that's in our, in our thing at the end of every episode? I'm in. The preceding podcast was brought to you by Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.